Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. It is currently 110 degrees outside, and it is also a Thursday, meaning two things. One, I'm probably going to be sweating a little bit more in these videos as there is a heat wave in California. But two, that also means it's Poetry Thursday, so let's talk about some pretty fun poetry that I uh, read recently. Uh, Today's poem is about something, or maybe nothing at all. I am referring to Folklore by Dean Young. For those who don't know, Dean Young is an American poet uh, who actually, uh, he died uh, this year. I can't find a specific date, but according to various sources, he uh, he died um, sometime in 2022. Uh, He was a surrealist poet. Uh, a second generation member of the New York School. Don't quite know what that means, but uh, the New York School did deal with a lot with like surrealism and, and those ideas, not only the writers, but also the other performance artists of the school. Uh, Dean Young's work uh, was a bit surreal, and you'll see a little bit of that of, uh, in the poem that I'm talking about today. But he, uh, he also focused on death and life and, and those sorts of topics, especially after he had a heart attack um, about 10 years ago or so, his work focused a little bit more on, on those ideas, uh, which again, you'll see in some of the work here today. Uh, he won a number of awards for his collections of poetry, and he was even a, uh, a Pulitzer Prize finalist. I don't think he quite won the award, but that's still uh, a pretty big deal on his end. Uh, so a little bit of uh, interesting poetry that I don't quite understand. Seems to be a running theme with this pa- these past couple of poems that I've checked out. Uh, So without further ado, um, uh, let's talk about folklore. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Folklore. You shouldn't have a heart attack in your 20s. 47 is the perfect time for a heart attack. Feeding stray shadows only attracts more shadows. Starve a feeder fever, shatter a glass house. People often mistake thirst for hunger, so take a big slurp. A motorboat is wasted on me even though all summer the pool was. I didn't get in it once, not in it, not in it twice. A dollhouse certainly isn't wasted on a mouse, both in terms of habitation and rhyme. Always leave yourself time to get lost. Fifty cattle are enough for a decent dowry, but sometimes a larger gesture is called for, like shouting across the Grand Canyon. Get used to nothing answering back. Always remember the great effects of the Tang poets the meagerness of their wine, meagerness of writing supplies. Go ahead, drown in the moon's puddle. Contusions are to be expected, and a long wait in ICU under the muted TV's advertising miracle knives and spot removers. How wonderful to be made entirely of hammered steel. No one knows why Lee chose to divert his troops to Gettysburg, but all agree it was the turning point of the Civil War. Your turning point may be lying crying on the floor. Get up. The perfect age for being buried alive in sand is eight, but jumping up 33, alluding to the resurrection, a powerful motif in Western art, but then go look at the soup cans and crumpled fenders in the modern wing. What a relief. Nearly 80% of the denizens of the deep can produce their own light, but up here, we make our own darkness. And so that was folklore. In terms of analysis, it's a bit difficult to pull apart the, uh, this poem. I feel like you have to do it line by line. And even then, that might not be the best thing uh, to do, as, I might ex- as, as I'll explain in a little bit. But uh, one, one thing that's very interesting, um, especially after having learned that Dean Young had a heart attack uh, near in his 40s, is that uh, the first line really stands out. You shouldn't have a heart attack in your 20s. 47 is the perfect time for a heart attack, maybe alluding to uh, his own life, but also kind of getting at uh, a little bit of absurdity, which you'll see throughout this poem. Like what makes uh, like twi- the, difference between, the difference between 20 and 47? Like if you have a heart attack in your 20s and a heart attack when you're 47, it's not the perfect time for anything because it's, it's going to be a lot of pain. It's going to cost you a lot of money. You're going to be in the hospital quite a bit. Uh, and, and so it's, it's, it's very ridiculous. 
Um, he says, starve a fever, shatter a glass house. Kind of getting at um, uh, those common sayings like starve a fever, like feed a cold or something like that. And sh uh, don't throw stones in a glass house, mixing and maxing, matching uh, various metaphors. And then a lot of what he's saying is, is like complete nonsense in this poem. Like, 50 cattle are enough for a decent dowry, but sometimes a larger gesture is called for, like shouting across the Grand Canyon. Get used to nothing answering back. Which is both silly and also kind of haunting. Like, why won't anything answer back? That implies loneliness and, and uh, kind of isolation. Like, you're just shouting across the Grand Canyon. But then you remember that it's like... Um, the, like you're shouting across the Grand Canyon as a dowry, and that doesn't quite make sense. Like the the poem, like it it, it has bits and pieces where it kind of makes sense, and then when you pull it apart and look at the larger like uh, context of it, it stops making sense entirely. Which I think is 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 very fascinating how he like he he just mixes and matches these um, what what appear to be common sayings or. Uh, folklore or you know just old wives tales and um, just mixes them up uh, in a way that that it, it, these sounds like these it makes it sound like these are the delusional ramblings of a madman and you're like well surely there must be some you know some meaning here like this can't just be nothing at all this can't be um, this can't be a meaningless poem it can't be just a, a list of sayings why else would you publish a poem like this uh, and I think that it gets at, um, as I was saying earlier, like it's difficult to find meaning in Dean Young's work because he's he said so himself that a lot of the times there might not be a meaning or there he might not be going for meaning that you're, you're looking at his poetry the wrong way. Uh, one, one thing in particular I, I, uh, that I've, I've read is that he he took out weird quotes from technical manuals and put them in his poems. I don't think you see that here, but it kind of gets at how it's kind of weird to look for meaning in, in a surrealist type of poem. And you're meant to more reflect on the use of words and um, maybe the absurdity of it all, how we're trying to find meaning and, and just the, the, the string of words and ultimately none can be found uh, and there might be you know some lines that stand out but ultimately it's mixed up with things that that don't quite make sense um, like he talks about uh, how Lee diverting his troops at Gettysburg was a turning point in the war and he said your turning point may be lying crying on the floor get up the perfect age for being buried alive in sand is eight, but jumping up 33. And it, it's kind of funny. Like, this poem is very humorous. But um, at the same time, like, if you try to find meaning in it, uh, like, you might just be trying to find meaning in these these weird sayings that that no one quite says anymore. But also, if you, if you mix and match, like, with these meanings... Like, you create something new entirely, and it doesn't feel out of place, even compared to the old ones. So kind of highlighting the absurdity of the old sayings that we used to have, too. At least that might be what he's getting at. Again, it might be entirely moot trying to find meaning within this poem. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Folklore by Dean Young. Uh, pretty fun poem, uh, just because a, a poem might not have a meaning at heart, or just because the poet uh, didn't intend for the poem to really have meaning, does not mean that it's not worth reading. Um, not everything needs to have a meaning. Some things are just beautiful poetry. Uh, not to say that poetry by itself isn't meaningful. Um, it, it's, it's a bit of a confusing thing. Anyways, if you read this poem or you have thoughts on what I just read, uh, comment below. I would love to hear from you and have a discussion about this, if one can even be had. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poet, this poem, and Poetry Thursday if they don't already know about it. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and old wives' taily travels. Farewell.